Greetings all you Manix of Mindsetter Grimes, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Gara Prime and a build that I've been running that is actually very fun and very effective with zero Forma required. Obviously, I could put Forma into her, and eventually I might, just for some convenience. Um, so this build has really two main important parts. An Augment and a Zaw Hammer with Exodia Hunt. So let's go over the Gara build first. So this is how I built Gara Prime. Now, obviously, this is zero forma. Uh, you can forma her as much as you want, but Spectra Siphon. 50% chance to drop an energy orb. Um, unfortunately, no matter what you do, 50% is always going to be 50%. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because that's where Exodia Hunt comes in. You might see that range and be like, that's a bit low for a Spectra Siphon build. But honestly, once you see what Exodia Hunt can do plus this, it won't matter. Uh, you already know where I'm going with this. Infinite energy, essentially. So, I'm pretty sure this is how I built normal Gara or something very close. I don't know. I subsumed her as soon as I got Gara Prime. Um, so, anyway, yeah, it, it works very, very well. Uh, adaptation could definitely be here instead of something like Augur Reach uh, because adaptation will help her tank. But, you know, whatever. So, let's go over the, you know, hammer. So, this is me, Mallet. I prefer Shattering Storm because of its combos that works very, very well with Exodia Hunt. I have Corrosive on here, uh, and this is a mostly status hammer. It's sort of a hybrid, but not really. And also, it doesn't matter because this thing could go to level cap with only condition overload. That's how broken melee is. Fast attack speed, all of that. I'm not going to use the Volus Prime, the Volus Prime, because the Volus Prime doesn't pull enemies in. Uh, it's a very, very strong hammer, though. It, it wrecks everything as it would, as it normally would. Um, anyway, so let's go into uh, Steel Path. So, what do I think about Gara Prime? Well, she looks fucking fantastic. Let's let's just state that. Uh, after I'll show my fashion, if that's something you guys care about, which is you know. Valid because you know fashion is end game. There really isn't a true end game. The only end game is fucking uh, runway models. We're runway models of death. So the uh, still a prime can ha can in fact handle uh, steel path, but I'm going to be mostly just using my melee. And is that assist? Ah, uh, god damn it, Gara. I'm not going to question where you got that cyst from. I don't want to know. Uh, probably something to do with Nidus. Um, uh, anyway. So this build's very simple. Once I see a group of enemies, all I do is that. And then I use Exodia Hunt to pull them in. And then they drop a bajillion energy orbs. Now, this also works with any crowd control ability. It doesn't matter. So you can use this with... Uh, a build on, like, I don't know, Korra, on Vobon, Mag, uh, anyone that can pull a bunch of enemies into a single spot, you will basically have unlimited energy. And also, yeah, um, Zaw Hammer. Do not ignore hammers, people. Shattering Storm is ridiculous with Exodia Hunt. I need to do this to keep the everything up. Also, I, I love that golf swing. That swing, I love it so much. But yeah, melee is very brain dead. It's very brain dead, very easy. It kills everything in the game super quick. Melee, I cannot wait till it's balanced. Um, I shouldn't say nerf because people will cry about that that word. You can't can't say the 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 nerf. You can't say nerf. It's forbidden. Um, but I mean, let let's be real here. Melee is too strong. It's way too damn strong. Only a steel path though. Uh, a normal missions guns will get you very far. So. I mean, I've already done a video on me, Mallet. It's very, very powerful. Anyway, that's this build. It's really, really cool. So, all I gotta do is recast my three around groups of enemies. And you see all this energy everywhere. This is obviously very good for teams. So, like I said, uh, you could put this ability on Mag, you can put it on Vobon. Uh, Vobon might actually be a bit better, um, just because of how Vortex works. 
Uh, you can put this on, well, any frame with crowd control. If you put this on Korra, yeah, that's infinite energy while you're farming stuff with Strangle Dome. So that's very, very good. And also, if you have Arcane Energize for some unknown reason, uh, then yeah, literally unlimited energy. And just cast it. They get distracted. Now, it can die real quick, uh, which is unfortunate, but it really doesn't matter too much. And yeah, doing this, yeah, Gara is basically indestructible. I mean, she's already a really tanky frame. Her main tankiness does come from, uh, you know, her two, but also the fact that her two kills people. Um, anyway, let's... It's always this fucking room. I am tired of seeing this goddamn room on this tile set. Every single time I do Steel Path, it's this room. Life so let's just put this down. Even if the enemies are glass, they're still going to be affected by it. So keep that in mind. I am going to kill the Acolyte, though. Because I still think I have the... Yeah, I have the resource doubler. So I might as well, right? I might as well get some more steel essence, even though I don't need it. Um, yeah. I mean, you just put that down. Enemies go towards it. And then you just uh, Exodia hunt them. And, you know, you, you rob them for their energy. It's great. I need to micromanage the life support. And then I can just slam Exodia hunt. There, there we go. That, that, that worked. Pull them all in and yeah. Obviously, it's much better in a team because you'll be benefiting the team greatly. Solo, yeah. It works very well, especially if you have low efficiency. Uh, it's a very good ability. Like, her three might not be the fanciest ability, but with the augment, it's very helpful. It doesn't do damage. It doesn't, you know, help... Well, it, it kind of does help kill. Uh, it's a little fragile, but... Hey. I don't think you can complain about basically unlimited energy when a lot of frames in this game need a shit ton of it. This will also benefit um, if you use uh, energy conversion, which I, I use. Also, this on Lavos, yeah, um, <laughs> well, transmutation probe plus, plus all these energy orbs, yeah. It's going to be a lot of uh, health orbs, uh, too, but also you can add equilibrium and uh, health conversion and be basically invincible. That's what I do on my Lavos build anyway, but I have health conversion on him because it's a very good fit. He makes energy. He makes health orbs, so why not? Look at all that. Look at this stockpile. Also, I love how they orbit in a dazed and confused face. Uh... uh Dazed and confused uh, state, not face, while they're uh, being Exodia hunted. Pop. It's already up to 42k. I don't think my my two isn't going to be killing these enemies anytime soon. I think I have to get up to like 200k for that to start happening. But it's doing damage. Now, where is this doofus? AKA the Acolyte. And yeah, if it breaks, no real big, no big deal. I basically don't need our, uh, uh, Z Zenerix Energizing Dash anymore with all this energy. Even more so if you're using Arcane Energize. So, as brain dead as this is, it's very, very effective, obviously. But yeah, melee is pretty brain dead. So. I really wonder when the gun buffs are happening. I'd rather have gun buffs before uh, the Sisters of uh, Parvos. To be honest. Although they might, it, it might come, th those two might come at the same time. Who knows? I, I don't, I don't really know. Pop. Yeah, I can do finishers on the MC2. That was 400k. I don't know where this Acolyte is, by the way. Where the fuck? There we are. By the way, the Acolyte gets confused by the three, which is funny. Hopefully it's no one annoying. 
Okay, misery. I'm gonna wait for them to come down here. If they will at all. Because I don't... I want to fight near my uh, three. So I'm just gonna have to wait a bit. Or you know what? I can just... It's probably a bad idea. Yeah, they get confused. Look at that. Pretty funny. I don't know why that works. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to question it. So yeah, they did a bit of damage to me, but that's fine. I need to do this, and then I'm going to list skedaddle. Because I proved my point. This build, this setup is pretty damn effective. I don't think Exodia Hunt needs to be nerfed. I think it's fine. Um, it's only it's only usable on Zaws, so it's not like busted busted. But it's very good uh, with the Skara build. Um, so like I said, it doesn't just work on Gara. It can work on any frame with a crowd control ability uh, that can group enemies up together. Even Nidus would work pretty well with it. I can imagine like a health conversion, no, ener uh, energy conversion Nidus with the crit buff would be stupid. It'd be red crits everywhere. Um, yeah, again, this is the build. Obviously, you can just, you know, put on adaptation instead of auger reach. I don't have the space for it, though. I have to put some forma into her. And that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to put a deep polarity here. And then I'll put on uh, Adaptation. And I also do want to put something in the Exos slot. The number one pick for me usually is simply Vigilante Pursuit. I mean, see the enemy locations to get more crits on your primary weapons. Um, obviously, you could put on like Cunning Drift or uh, Power Drift, whatever you want, really. But, you know, I might also put a... a Aura Forma on her. Although, maybe not. I'll probably do all that once I get a uh, affinity booster. I don't want to spend money on a uh, plot on an affinity booster. So that's this build in Steel Path. In normal missions, it still works. Uh, having Spectro Siphon there to you know confuse the enemies and make them group up, and then you kill them and you get a lot of energy works very well. But sometimes there just isn't enough enemies for it to be super consistent. Uh, in Steel Path, there is. There's a lot of enemies. But it still works very well. Uh, just, you know, nullifiers can ruin your day with it. Um, and the mirrors are kind of fragile, which is unfortunate. I kind of wish the mirrors had more health. I wish that you could give them more health by casting your four on them, but you can't. Uh, and this is the build for the hammer. Very good, very powerful, very simple, very generic. It's just a, it's just a melee weapon. You swing at enemies, they die. No matter what level they are, no matter what armor they have, no matter what how much health they have, they die, uh, real quick because melee is balanced, um, and it's made from these parts. If you were curious, uh, anyway, I think that just about does it for this Gara Prime video. Uh, anyway, for fashion stuff. You know, I have the I have the shards because a friend of mine gifted me the deluxe skin. I have the this ephemera, and it's my colors are these. So that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and remember, it doesn't just work on Gara. Uh, I might make other videos with Spectro Siphon on other frames. I think Korra is definitely a very good pick for it because the enemies, when, with enough range on Korra, the enemies don't get a choice to shoot at the mirrors while they're being suspended and whipped to death. So that's very good. I've done it in missions where there was a Korra and there were just energy orbs everywhere. Um, but, you know. Gara Prime looks fucking phenomenal, by the way. I think I actually like the way she looks uh, compared to this skin, 
I mean, this skin looks sick. Don't get me wrong, but you know, the the skins look pretty similar to me, which I'm not hating. It's great, and yeah, I do have the deluxe skin, which is cool, but I have a prime now, and her prime looks better. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, I forgot, also forgot I had the glass signed on. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, in Trilby, we trust.